Hello, I am A. Sabog, and I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota studying land and atmospheric, atmospheric science with an emphasis in manure and nutrient management. For this poster, I will be going over some preliminary data from research that is measuring the impacts integrating cover crops and manure have on soil health, nutrient cycling, and agronomic production. Cover crops have been gaining momentum over the years, yet their adoption rates in the upper Midwest are not as robust as other regions across the United States. This is especially the case in manure applied systems. This stems from the short cover crop growing season due to the prolonged winters that places in the upper, upper Midwest, such as in Minnesota, frequently have. Farmers are also hesitant to use cover crops because limited information is available on how integrating cover crops and manure impact crop yield. The objective of this study is to de determine the best management practices of integrating cover crops and manure and how that affects corn yield in the upper Midwest. In this study, we set up plots at the University of Minnesota West Central Research and Outreach Center located near Morris, Minnesota. Plots were arranged in a randomized complete block design with split plots. Main plots include nutrient source, which was liquid dairy manure applied in the early fall when soil temperatures were above 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, or in the late fall when soil temperatures were below 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius through sweep injection to minimize soil disturbance. Urea was applied in the spring prior to corn planting for plots not receiving manure application. We aim to apply the same plant available nitrogen rates across all the treatments. The split plot was cover crop seeding technique slash planting time. Winter rye and annual ryegrass mixtures were broadcast by hand at the V5 corn growth stage, which you can see in the picture on the left side of the poster. Broadcast by hand at corn phys physiological, physiological maturity or drilled after corn harvest. Plots receiving urea in the spring with no cover crops served as a control. Overall, we first planted cover crops in the late summer and early fall, then applied manure when the cover crops had enough time to grow and establish an active root system. We thought that by first planting a cover crop prior to manure application, the cover crops may tie up readily available nutrients into their biomass instead of being lost to the environment. Then once the cover crops were, are terminated in the spring, they can release those nutrients to the succeeding corn crop. Now moving on to preliminary data. It is important to note that the similar letters above the bars within each graph indicates a significant effect of our fixed effects among the treatments. When sampling cover crops in the late fall prior to the first frost event, cover crop biomass, which is a y-axis, is greatest when winter rye annual ryegrass is overseeded near R5 compared to drilling after harvest. Broadcasting at V5 also produced significantly more biomass than drilling. Come spring, the story changes a little bit. The highest biomass produced was for cover crops planted near R5, whereas the other cover crop treatments were not statistically different from one another. Nutrient sources now have an effect on cover crop biomass production in both fall and spring. You may also notice a drop in biomass production between fall and spring. This is most likely due to annual ryegrass being winter killed unlike the winter rye, which is a very winter hardy cover crop species. Moving on to yield data. When looking at the effects of nutrient source, the x-axis have, which is the x-axis, have on solid yield, the y-axis, manure either applied in the early fall or late fall, did significantly better than spring applied urea fertilizer. Although nitrogen was applied at similar rates, manure may be providing other services other than supplying nutrients, which may be positively impacting the soil and subsequently the corn crops. There was no statistical difference between the no cover crop and all, and all other cover crop treatments on silage yield. Among the cover crop treatments, broadcasting near V5 had the highest silage yield. So far, we learned that planting cover crops near plant senescence is a more optimal time to plant cover crops. Overseeding at R5 gives cover crops more time to grow compared to drilling after harvest, while providing enough sunlight exposure for cover crops to produce more biomass compared to overseeding before canopy closure. Increased cover crop biomass may reduce salad yield to a certain extent though. Ongoing research measuring various soil health parameters, crop nutrient uptake, among other tests are actively, are actively underway. I want to thank the USDA NRCS Conservation Innovation Grants Program the Minnesota Corn Research and Promotion Council, and the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research for the funds to support this project. I'd like to also thank all personnel at the West Central Research and Outreach Center and the Wilson Lab for field access and assistance with field work. 
Thank you for viewing my poster.